Welcome back to The Naked Photographer. Today we are looking at light meter apps and how they compare to regular light meters. So we're gonna take a look at different apps. I have about 10 of them to go through. Uh, this is not gonna be a full-scale review of each and every app. I'm not gonna go through all the features or anything like that. But what we are going to do is just look at how accurate it is versus a Sekonic, uh L58DR multimeter. It has a reflective spot meter and an incident function, as well as my old Sekonic Weston light meter here with both the reflected and the incident cone. And then I've also got my DSLR, which is a reflective meter, and I have it set in wide mode, similar to these two meters here. So we're just going to go through, we're going to see if we get similar readings. We're gonna take a shot at those readings with this and we'll look at each picture and just how it deals with the light. So I've got some bright sunlight, I've got some shaded foreground, I have some bright sky. Uh, so it should give us kind of a good dynamic range just to get a good feel for how it's kind of functioning. So let's go ahead, zoom in so you can see the screen a little bit better as well as everything else. And we'll go through all the different settings. So to start off, let's see what our meter is. I've already used my spot meter to meter a medium gray sunlit scene. So that gave us a setting of F8 and a third at a 30th, which I'm gonna to translate to F8 and a 40th of a second. So let me adjust my shutter speed here. Let's take that shot. Now, my DSLR is set for a wide setting for the light meter, and it also says, as we can see here, 140th at f8, and we are at 100 ISO for all of our meters. So let's take that shot as well. So they are identical, but this with a medium gray setting and this at the wide setting agree. Let's go ahead and do our general meter here. Okay, and we are getting a setting that is F8 at a little over 125th, a little faster. So it's going to be a little underexposed. So it's about a 60th of a second, or 160th of a second. But these have such a wide spread, it's general rule of thumb to point the meter downward a little. So let's do that and see if we get a setting a little bit closer to what we're getting with the other two. With a downward slope, it looks like we're getting more into this area, which is, yeah, right about eight at a 30th. All right, we're gonna go ahead and do the first light meter app, which is called Light Meter with no vowels in the name. And I've gone ahead and tilted it downward about the same as this, since I expect kind of a wider area. So let's go ahead and open the app. And this is a free app, and we're going to take a reading. Okay, let's go ahead and change our ISO to 100. And let's change this to F8 to match the rest. Okay, it's giving us a 120th, so it's kind of a, a wide reading, much like that. So it's actually agreeing with the general meter, but it has such a wide field of view, it's kind of being overexposed by the sky. Okay. So let's see our next app. Okay, this one is called Lux, L-U-X. And we have an aperture of eight. We have an ISO of 100, but it's giving us a 60th of a second. So it's already closer without moving anything to the previous. Can we set where we want? Ah, see, we can set this. So as a general reading, it gave us 160th. But if I want to expose for there, 
If I touch the sky, it exposes better for the sky. If I touch the foreground, it exposes quite bright for the foreground. And if I bring it back in, then I can adjust it. So it is adjustable depending on where I go. The previous one was just a general set and I couldn't really kind of change that. So here we're at the 60th and we took our test shot. So let's go to the next app, which is light meter. And it looks like my meter, pocket light meter. Okay, uh, no thanks, I'm not going to rate it right now. No thanks, I'm not gonna rate it right now. Okay, I'm at uh, 100 ISO, let's go to F8. And, okay, this is going to allow me to kind of pinpoint where I want it to go as well. So I can make it go wherever I want. Right now it's about a 60th, and that seems to agree with the last app. It is generally about the middle ground. That's dappled shadow and gives us, I would say, kind of a good medium between full shadow and a bright sky. Uh, this also gives us a white balance, so you could use this theoretically as a white balance meter as well. Okay, let's go to the next one. It is called light meter as well. This little 90 degree angle thing. Okay, spot metering, sure. We're going to go to 100. We're going to go to, oh, I guess I just changed until F8 shows up. A 50th of a second. And I can point to different areas, I guess. Oh, there we go, ooh, yeah, okay. Zoom out. I guess I can hold it. All right, but it says a 50th at F10. So that's a third of a stop, which would be, okay, our original setting of 1 40th at F8 would be the equivalent. And there we go, okay. So we'll take a shot at that one. Okay, let's go to our next one. Exp learning. All right, so let's change our, nope, we already have a 100 ISO, that's good. And I'm at F8, great, and it's giving me a 60th of a second. It's also putting it in EVs, if you like to think in exposure EV, exposure value. Okay, so, not bad, again, it's kind of looking towards that middle dappled sun. And we can see from the screen here, it is excluding the sky. So it's already cutting out the brightest area that would have caused us problems with this meter and some of these other apps. Okay, again, another one called just light meter, but it's got the plus or minus sign. All of these, by the way, have been free apps. Can I tell it where I want it to go? No, okay. So this one is just showing a general area from the camera without any sort of directional or pinpointing areas. And so we are going to get an underexposed scene that is lit mostly for the sky and the shot. Uh, therefore, this area, the foreground will be underexposed and the sky will be fine. Oh, it looks like we've got ads because that's why it's free. Okay, Light Mate is the next one. And I've got the back camera on. I can change it to the front camera and we will do that here in a moment. Uh, let's see, so 100 F8, and it's giving me an eighth of a second, so it looks like it is... Okay, I can touch it and compensate. So I can get it to a 60th, we'll go ahead and do that at F8. So you can touch and meter specific areas where you want, so that's good. Now, the front camera would be uh, for incident meter reading or at least on some of these it is. So let's see what we get with that. So we're gonna put our incident reader over the front camera. Let's choose front. And we're getting F8 at 45th of a second. Change it 
change it back to the back camera and we'll remove that for now. This by the way is uh, from Luxi, which will be not the next one but the one after uh, is an accessory available for that but it is sold separately. It's a free app but this is about $20 retail. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, my light meter Pro. This one I actually paid for. It's the only one I paid for. And we're going to do first reflective. Let's see. How do we change our... Okay, we've got our film speed. We have F8. And... Okay, so I have to hit measure. Okay, there we go. Alright, well it's giving me 8 at a 40th. At, oops, nope, we changed our ISO to 80. Uh, let's remeasure that. Okay, so F8 to 50th. So pretty close. Third of a stop different. Okay, so now let's change it to incident, which moves it to the front camera, and we're going to put this over the front. We're going to measure. And we're getting 8 at a tenth of a second. Let's see how that compares to this. And this is eight and a third at a fifteenth. So that would be the same eight at a tenth. So both of those agree. It's gonna be a little overexposed because I'm in the shade with these meters as opposed to the sunlight. Uh, but mostly I wanna see how these compare um, and they compare pretty well. See how this compares to this guy. Let's remove that. And here I've got my cone. Whoops. Let me get it all to fit. There we go. And let's see how this measures. Twenty-five. It's giving me... It might still be too bright. Oh, we're 25. We're getting about there, which is... What? F8 at 30th. So, it's actually giving me a reading very similar. to my reflective meter, which I don't think is right, but that's all right. Go ahead and put that back. Okay, let's move on to the next app, which is Luxie. And we are, again, front camera, so let's replace that again. Okay, ISO F8 at a 40th. So it's actually giving us in the shade about what we had before, which is what this one was actually giving us just a moment ago. And this one, nope, it's still at a 15. So for some reason I am getting a different reading with these than with this of about, um, what a stop, somewhere around a stop. About a stop and a half different. So we already know that uh, the reflective is about right. The incident should be about the same meter reading as long as I'm reading in the same light. I am not. I'm in the shade. So I expect this to be right for the shade. I expect this to be the right setting for the sun, but it's not in the sun. So that's that's interesting that I'm getting a sun reading in the shade. Okay, one more. Photo friend. And it is another front-facing reflective. And I'm at 100. Uh, F8. And I'm at a 20th of a second. Nope, I'm not. I'm at an 80th of a second. That's uh, millimeters, I guess. I don't know. So, do I... Can I read? Yeah, I... No, I don't, I don't want that. Okay, let me put this 
Oh, let me put this back. This is not the easiest to, uh, to figure here. Okay, so this is giving me, when touching the area here closest, um, it's giving me a reading a bit higher. It's giving me something around a hundredth of a second, so a full stop-ish higher than the others. Again, I think it's getting fooled by the bright light, even though it says I can select the area, and I selected the area. But there we go. So overall, the performance has been fairly consistent, but not fully consistent. I would say the Light Meter Pro app, which is my Light Meter Pro here, which is the paid option, of course, gave me the incident and reflected option as opposed to just one a cup uh, at least one other meter gave me that but it gave me the closest readings while still giving me a similar feel to an actual light meter and control the others especially the ones with the spot function gave me identical readings which i like uh to my camera to my meters uh, but i found the interface to be not as uh, refined. So if you want a light meter app that gives you good consistent results matching other equipment, but a nice light meter control feel, this is the one to go with. And I wanna say it was only like $4, $5, something like that. So not, a, not much. If you do the incident reading, you will need an accessory such as this. There are probably others out there. Uh, this sold by Luxie for all was about $20 online, but I'm sure you can find similar things for less. And it gave me the option for both reflected and incident. So overall, this is probably the one I would choose if I weren't uh, already equipped with the other meters, um, just for flexibility, usability, and accuracy. But your methods may vary. Uh, and that's going to be it for this week. So I appreciate you all watching. Thank you for spending your time with me. Please like, subscribe, sign up for my Patreon and support this channel. All those things and we'll see you another time.